Whitman is a former Bill Clinton pollster, and Mark Thiessen is a former speechwriter for President George W. Bush, a Washington Post columnist, and American Enterprise Institute uh, fellow. Uh, Mark, and uh, good to have both of you with us today. You know, when you take a Thanks, look at Barbara. this, um, Bernard and Mark, it, it's, it, you know, I know, Bernard, that you, you have polls that are to the contrary. You know, you, you feel that, that actually the perception that some people have of this here is not the case. Let me let you state your case. Yeah, if you actually ask for nationals in a number of different countries, you'll find a very different picture. Uh, two different polls, one by the Pew Global Institute, surveyed people in 39 countries and they found that in 28 of 39 countries people had a favorable view of the u.s. in 24 countries out of 39 survey they were confident in obama and in 22 countries they felt the u.s. was a partner how do those numbers compare to 2008 uh... very very different back then only eight countries surveyed had a favorable view of the u.s. only nine saw us as a partner in just three countries out of then 24 countries surveyed uh, we're confident in President Bush. So there's no question that the opinions of the world's population mm -hmm. of the U.S. dramatically better than they used to be. And in fact, just one more statistic, uh, currently 45% of those surveyed in a 26,000 interview survey uh, by the BBC across a number of different countries, 45% say the U.S. has a positive influence in world affairs, only 34% okay. right. negative. I, I, That's I get your, completely I get the flip drift. of 2008. Okay. Um, I, Mark, Weigh in on this, and then I want to play something from Bill O'Reilly sure. last night that we're going to uh, show you in just a moment because it's, it's sort of a very large question. So maybe people like us better according to some of those polls, and then you have to ask the question of, of effectiveness. How effective is U.S. policy uh, around the world today, Mark? And not very effective uh, from the looks of Syria right now. I mean, look, pre President Obama has diminished the presidency and America's standing in the world more in the last three weeks uh, than Jimmy Carter did in four years. This, I mean, the president is actually going out there and, cl and claiming this as a victory, saying this is because of the, the show of strength we put on the world. What show of strength? Was it a show of strength when a U.S. official told the L.A. Times that we would launch a strike that was just muscular enough not to get mocked? Or when Secretary Kerry said yesterday that whatever we did would be unbelievably small? Was that a show of strength? And was it a show of strength when Obama walked back from his own red line and said it was the world's red line and then went to the world to enforce it and nobody but France joined us? And pulling back even a little bit further, I mean, tomorrow is the, the one-year anniversary of the Benghazi attack. No one has been held to account. Was that a show of strength? If you want to know why, how much how respect the, the, the world has for us, why did Bashar Assad use chemical weapons? Because he didn't respect the United States, because he didn't think that we'd follow through yeah. on our commitments and do anything about it. About it. So, well, so if you want to see a sign of our respect, uh, the respect for the world, see it in the pictures of, uh, of those children who have been gassed by chemical weapons. Let's listen to uh, Bill O'Reilly from last night uh, asking the question whether or not America has the strength and the power and the will that it once had. The sad truth is we cannot do it any longer. The USA is too weak, and it pains me to say that. It's too weak to even take care of a cheap thug like Assad. Bernard, what's your, what's your well, reaction Bill to that? Well, Bill O'Reilly, no surprise, has it wrong again. The fact that we were about to undertake military action against uh, the Assad regime is precisely why a multilateral, multinational coalition uh, has formed. And obviously, Mark has not been watching the news today because what, he doesn't realize that the U.N. is likely going to approve a resolution that was first put forward by Kerry, joined by Russia, now put forward uh, officially by France. And I think we actually may be able to avoid using... Uh, military strikes yeah, let's, against let, Syria. Let's remember, Bernard, let, let's to, remember Bernard, to, where, where we are here. How okay? many countries? Because uh, this, the Security just, you know, about an hour Nations. ago, Vladimir Putin came forward. And, and, you know, there are those who think that he is, you know, snickering his way through this whole thing, right? So the man who gave the Cairo speech and said that we were going to, you know, build relationships between, uh, between the United States and between Muslims around the world, we've watched sort of the systematic destruction of several countries throughout the course of the, of the Middle East. And now you have Vladimir Putin to the rescue, embracing. Syria and saying, you know, don't worry, we're, we're going to take care of this. You and I will work out the chemical weapons issue. And by the way, United States of America, you need to back off. No show of force. You must negate this idea of any sort of military strike, or I'm not going to go back there and talk to Syria again. Bernard, quickly your reaction, and I, then Mark. I, I disagree. In fact, the threat of military force is what brought us out no, to the table. No, but now, now Russia is saying not, that the only way that they'll go forward with this is if we promise that we won't use any. We will military never force. take military force off the table as an option because okay, if well the inspectors the are conclusive, we still well, reserve the right to strike.
Mark? He was about to lose a vote in Congress, which would have negated the possibility of military force, because no one has any confidence that he has a plan or a strategy for Syria. If he wants to show some strength in the world, what he ought to do is go out tonight and say, here's, the, here's, here's what he ought to say tonight. He ought to say, Bashar Assad, you have to do this, this, and this in order to avoid military action. These, these demands are not negotiable. And then you have a deadline of this particular date to meet them. And if you don't, then we are going to launch military strikes on you. That would be a show of strength. I think but he's not exactly, going to do that. I think that's exactly what he will do. You do? I hope I so. I do. But I think you're wrong. All right. So, so we're going to look tonight to the president to come out and basically say, look, it's good that you guys have come up with this deal. Uh, but here's our, these are our conditions. These are the conditions of the United States of America. And you're either going to abide by them, you're going to wrap up all of your chemical weapons in a little box, and we're going to tie a bow on them, and we're going to send them to some place that you'll never see them again, as Hillary Clinton t stepped out and said uh, yesterday. Or we're going to hit you with a military strike, and, you know, we're, we're not going to be sort of, you know, uh, giving, you, giving you the timeline the way that we sort of have over the last couple of weeks. And right? that strike should be would, limited, be it should be consequential, and it should be targeted. All right. Mark? It, it's going to be unbelievably small, and it's not going to be happen, and it's not going to happen. <laughs> Bernard, what do you make about that, the whole unbelievably small? Uh, I mean, you know, what, I think, was that I think to garner support uh, I, in Congress? And if so, that's a rather strange way to do it, isn't I it? I think the idea is to telegraph those that it is going to be targeted, that it's going to be limited, and it's going to be consequential. We don't need a massive strike to have a serious effect. I think that's what Kerry uh, was meaning to say. Maybe the words happen to be a little inappropriate, but the point is this right. is not a long-term, massive, telegraphing engagement. All right, so we will look for the it's president tonight to weakness. say that, that we would never take military force off the table. I think that's a logical uh, you know, expectation uh, tonight, given what Russia has just said. Mark and Bernard, good to talk to you both. Thank uh, you, Mark.